I'm going to show you how you can easily create awesome hover effects in Elementor that you can apply to anything, including whole containers. We're going to take a look at how you can rotate, resize or move anything when you hover over it. And I'm also going to show you how you can set the point from which these effects happen, which is going to give you more control over everything and allow you to create different effects very easily. First, let's prepare our containers. I have a container over here with two containers inside of it. The first one has an icon and a heading and the second one has a text editor. The content doesn't really matter. We can apply this to anything, but I love using this for clickable content. Next, we're going to give our container a class by going under advanced and under CSS classes, I'm going to type in container. These classes can be anything, you just have to make sure they match in the CSS so you're targeting your elements correctly. Now it's time to add in our CSS. Under advanced, I'm going to go under custom CSS and I'm going to paste it in here. If you're not using Elementor Pro, you can go into your admin bar, go under customize, additional CSS and paste it in here. But I'll be working over here, so I'm going to paste it in. And by the way, all of this will be available down below so you can just copy and paste it in as well. Once I do that, I have this little hover effect. My container gets rotated when I hover over it. If you want to learn how to change the colors of containers, icons, headings, text editors on hover, or if you want to learn how to reveal things when hovering over the container, links to those two videos will be in the description and I highly recommend you check them out. But for this effect, to change out how much it rotates and in which direction, just adjust the degrees over here. If I make it five degrees, you can see it's very different from minus 10. Just play around with it until you get the result you want. And over here, you can make the effect slower or faster. If this is helpful, please make sure you like the video and hit that subscribe button. It would help me out a whole lot. We're gonna get into how to rotate it like this in just a second, but first let's take a quick look at how to move a container on a hover. We're just gonna replace our transform rotate with transform translate. And I'm going to type in two different values, which can, of course, be anything. And you can use any unit you want. I'm going to be using pixels. The first value is going to move the container sideways, so left or right. And the second one is going to move it up or down. If I add in a hundred pixels and a hundred pixels, it's going to move it a hundred pixels to the right and a hundred pixels down. If I make it minus a hundred pixels for both of these, it's going to move it a hundred pixels to the left and a hundred pixels up. So just adjust these values however you want to move your container or any other element in any direction and any distance you want. To resize the container on hover, we're going to use transform scale. By default, the scale is one, which equals 100%. So that is the original size. If I make it 1.5, suddenly it's 150%. If I make it 0.5, it's 50%. You can also easily combine these effects. So you can, for example, get an effect where an element gets rotated and resized at the same time. You can do that by going over here under the transform and just continuing after the bracket. So right now I have this effect set to scale, but let's say I also want to rotate it. I'm just going to add a space and then type in rotate and then brackets and minus 10 degrees. Now I get this, the container gets bigger, but it also gets rotated and it also works works with the translate. If I go ahead and I type in translate 50 pixels and minus 50 pixels, this is what I get. So it's getting bigger, it's rotating and it's also moving at the same time. And with all of these effects, just like with the rotate, you can of course adjust the speed. But you're going to notice both of these effects, the rotate and the scale happen from the center, meaning for scale, it's going to expand in all directions equally. And for the rotate, it behaves exactly like if you took a piece of paper, pressed it down in the middle, and rotated it. With just another little line of CSS, we're gonna get the ability to control the exact location the effects happen from. This only works for the rotate and the scale because for the translate, it is not necessary. An example of when you would need this is to create a rotate effect that happens from a specific corner or when resizing an element where you don't want it to get bigger on all sides so it doesn't bleed out into other elements. Like this, for example. We're gonna add in transform origin. Now you can make that origin, meaning the point the effect happens from, anything. The default is 50% and 50%, which is the center. So if I set it to 50% and 50%, you're going to see nothing changes. Let's say I want it to be bottom left. I can just type in bottom left. And now all of a sudden my rotation is happening from this corner. Or I can type in top right. 
Just using those actual words is the easiest way to do this, but you can make it fully custom and add in any unit you want. The first value determines the horizontal position, so left to right, and the second one determines the vertical position, so top to bottom. The first value being set to 0% is fully on the left, 50% is in the middle, and 100% is fully on the right. Similarly, the second value being set to 0 means it's at the top, set to 50% it's in the center, and set to 100% it's at the bottom. So 100% and 0% would be the upper right corner. 100% and 100% would be the bottom right corner. And you can set in any value in between these, 20, 35, 70, whatever you want. You can use other units, but I like to just stick with percent because it's more straightforward. You can actually go over a hundred percent as well, but things get a little bit weird at that point. And for scale, it's the exact same thing. To get our container to not bleed left when getting resized, for example, we can just add in transform origin top left. It still goes over the left edge a tiny bit while the animation is happening, but in the end it's where it's supposed to be. And if you don't scale your element up drastically, that little overflow over here is gonna be hardly noticeable. The transform origin also works when combining the effects. Here's how it looks with a combined scale and rotate. But the interesting thing is if you add in translate, it also works because the origin applies to the scale and the rotate and the element also gets moved. So we get something like this. If we only have translate applied, the transform origin does nothing. And if you want to control which element is on top when you hover over it and it rotates or gets bigger like this, just use a Z index. A higher Z index is going to be on top. So if this container has a Z index of 4 and this one has a Z index of 3, the 4 one is going to be on top. To make it responsive, we're just going to add in some media queries. You can either disable the hover effect entirely or edit it. Here's how we can disable it for devices under 767 pixels, so for mobile phones. So if I go into my responsive mode and I go under my mobile, you can see the effect no longer happens because we set the transform to none and we set the background color on hover to the original color so it doesn't change when we hover over the container. And here's an example of how you can edit it. So if I just paste that in and I change the rotate to scale and I make it 1.5, it's gonna scale up more on mobile than it does on desktop or tablet. And when it comes to responsiveness, you can also switch out the effect entirely. So you can have an element get resized on desktop and only rotate without getting resized on mobile or vice versa. I included examples for all of these down below, so just switch and combine them however you want. And of course, this also goes for combining effects, meaning you can resize and rotate something for one device and just rotate it without changing the size for another. The transform origin can also be fully responsive. You can change it for every device individually, so once you add in that media query you can just go ahead and copy whichever class you want and change out any property you want. For example, you can change the background color, you can go ahead and change the rotation or the scale, even the speed of the transition. Very simple. To make it responsive for even more devices, you can just add in more media queries and again adjust the values. Here's an example for devices between 767 and 1024 pixels. So that is for tablets. Just go ahead and change out these values and then make sure you target the correct classes and make your adjustments. If this video was helpful, check out this video next. It's very interesting as well. And also make sure you hit those like and subscribe buttons. Thank you for watching.